Yo, what's poppin' with it? You got your boy Nanja here, back at it with another video. So for this video, I figured I'd go ahead and you know, change it up a little bit. This is gonna be a, a quick uh, replay series thing or whatever. Uh, just, you know, a, a nice like one of whatever of me playing Sarah. Now, you might be wondering, but Nanja, why Sarah? Well, I started to play it because I was playing it for GP in order to qualify for final stage. I had done pretty well with it in stage one, like it's in like literally like every run but one got me like 4-1 or 5-0 straight up, it, it was crazy. So I was like, oh, you know, let, let, let me just you know, go ahead and do it, you know, like, let me just go ahead and do this again for stage two. Now, you know, there were plenty of other things I could have played, like for example, I could have played uh, variants of Dark Feast, but either like, you know, Turbo, Turbo Flyros or just like, sure, just like, um, sure, just like Dark Feast, but I could have played, I could have played Mid Shadow, Mid Shadow still, you know, always pretty good. I could have played Roach, I could have played uh, City of Gold, uh, Stormhaven, uh, you know, there, there were plenty of options, but like, but you know, Seraph it was just like resonant, it was just like calling to me. So, for those of you who know, like, I usually like playing out like nice, nice, like, nice decks that have like, you know, um, the ability to have like nice defensive backlinks, and that's, that's what I like about Seraph. So I'm going to quickly show you guys the deck so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. Oh. Uh, well, I'm going to not actually click on the wrong deck list. Okay, here we go. This is one playing today. So as you can see, it's pretty streamlined. Basically, you just you just go ahead and you, just, you invocate your city of gold. There's only one city of gold in here, just because like you don't actually really care about drawing more copies of city of gold. And even if your opponent blows it up, that usually means that they have to, that usually means that they're playing Sapphire Blade. Or sorry, that always means that they're playing Sapphire Blade. And additionally, it steals a turn from them that you lost, but your turns are more important than their than their turns because if they're not doing anything, then on turn eight, boom, bitch, like it just comes down and it's just like, hey, you have an out. You probably don't, so you leave. Um, that being said though, you can still play the deck pretty offensively at times because like Marwyn stuff is crazy. So I've had games where I just like play like Forgotten Sanctuary on 5, uh, which gives you the Brong. Brong is also very, very crazy because if you haven't read it, go ahead and read it now. Ward and cannot be targeted by any souls and effects. That's, that's such, an, it's such an insane effect. And then to also have Ward on top of that's actually pretty gasm. Um, but yeah, I've had games where I go ahead and play Forgotten Sanctuary on, on 5. Then go ahead and play Marwyn to get another one on six. Go ahead and evolve to Marwyn, and then something Bob Jones like I got. I have so much pressure that they just they like, can't stop me. Like, it, it, and even if they can't stop me, they can't stop me and put forth enough pressure to stop me from playing Seraph. So it's like like you know two pronged attack. And again, for those of you who actually you know watch my videos and whatnot, you'll know that, that those are the types of, that those are the types of decks which I like which I like the most because you know you got a nice like Trojan horse. So you got like you know a nice like Plan B. Having Plan B is so so crucial. Oof. Alright, bam. So let me go get right on into the games. So, even though it's a 5 0, uh, one of these games actually does not count because my opponent just like, conceded on one. So, <laughs> so, we're just gonna go ahead and skip through that. It was, it was a RuneCraft game. Uh, Barong is, very, is actually, is actually at, at its peak performance versus RuneCraft. Just because if you play a Barong, they have to evolve into it. It's either they have to evolve into it or they have to, like, or they have to burn like multiple, or they have to burn like a Blade Mage plus an Enchanted Sword, or they have to burn a Zealot plus an Enchanted Sword, you know, or they have to burn an Evo. If, they, if, if you pre evolve the Brong every single time, they, that means that when they evolve, they have, to, they have to evolve either Chimera or they have to evolve Daria. Having to suicide your Daria on a Daria turn is so, is so sad. It's so funny and so sad every single time. But, uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and just skip right on to the second game, which is a Shadow game. So, many people will tell you that, that like, Shadow is really, is, is, like, a bad class now because literally because Haven exists, and Haven has the most ways to punish you. But a good mid-Shadow player, and I mean, like, a really, really good mid-Shadow mid -shadow player, not, not like one of those, oh, you know, I, I curved out, so, you know, I'm good to go, I can, you know, I can do whatever. No, but, like, an actual, like, good mid-Shadow player who's actually just, you know, like, using his brain, playing the text, like, yeah, got everything going from whatever. Yeah, you're not gonna beat those players. Like, like, like those, play those players got your number, buddy. All right, so I'm going second. Honestly, I like going second in this matchup only because if I find my Forbidden Ritual, it gives me the opportunity to go ahead and, and just like and just like ritual for for guaranteed uh two to three creatures. Sometimes four if they uh if they, if they drop like double goblin on two. Well, well, sorry, if they drop like double like one drop on two, followed by like one drop on one. Right, so you might notice that I kept the globe and the barong. I only kept those because the globe can pick me up. It will already pick me up multiple cards. I'm going second. It's fine. I don't really care that much about what it picks me up. Now, yes, I, I, I could have cared about about it picking up, about, about it picking up Forgotten Sanctuary, but really, I only cared be, in that I wanted to try to find 
um, forbidden ritual off of the globe. Yeah, so this turn I just go I just go ahead and you know, invocate my uh, city. Now he played Lady Grey here. That was really smart on his part. He goes face. He plays a second Lady Grey. I'm like, yikes, shit. He's actually playing the matchup well. So the one time where I went where I went three two uh, in GP while while playing this deck, it was because my opponent did what this guy's doing right here. But on turn four, or, but he also had a one drop. And on turn four, the guy played Catacombs. I was like, oh, did people actually really play this still? Damn. Yeah. So I lost. But um, yeah. So for this turn, this turn's actually a very, very difficult turn. So basically, I can't actually kill these unless I have scriptures, but I don't have scriptures. So, <laughs> so it's like so it's very, very like what, what do I do here? Uh, like the the game where my opponent played the the game where, where my opponent like played the played the uh, played the catacombs and whatnot is still fresh in my mind. So like I'm trying to like play around that, but I don't really know what to do. So I'm just gonna just sit here and just like trade this in. I could have gone face. I could have just drawn more cards too because I already have Themis. In hand, I just had to draw Marwin. I could have drawn four cards, like four cards between this turn and my next turn, and that would have been really good. But here, he just like goes and plays Skull Ring. I'm like, oh crap, he's going old school. And this, this, you know, this part of why Mid is really good because you can go and like play a lot, of, like, play a lot of these like tech that you just like don't like think about or like know that you're gonna play. But here, I play the Marwin. The Marwin's actually super, super good here. Why? Because it turns off his Skull Ring immediately before he can get a creature back, as long as they don't, as long as they don't, as long as they don't evolve trade. I pick up a second Marwin, that's wonderful, because right now I, I could technically almost go for a game. Technically. But here he plays Zombie Party, I'm like, oh, sure, that's fine. He trades, that's fine too. Now here, I, I, I should have evolved my Marwin. Uh, not to trade, but, but just to evolve my Marwin, because I, I could have been Catacombs here. I could have been Catacombs, that would have been disastrous. But thankfully he doesn't have it. So I, I get rewarded for misplaying Kappa just, just because he didn't have it. Or if he did have it, he, he didn't know to play it. I'm not really sure what, what happened there. But anyway, this is a pretty easy slam dunk then. This easy. Easy peasy one this squeezy. Alright, so now, this turn. He plays a copy of Death, uh, of Death Breath. That's good for him uh, because I can't play my Seraph yet. Also, even if I wanted to play my Seraph, I still can't play it into this board. Because if I do, I'm going to die because that is a lot of... Uh, that's a lot of pressure he has there. Give me one second so I can quickly, quickly turn on my shadow count thing for you guys. So you can actually, you can actually go ahead and like follow the, uh... No, that's, not, that's the wrong card I'm looking for. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so you guys can actually like follow how many, how many like shadows I have. Alright, so right now as you can see I have, I have six shadows. This turn what I'm going to go, go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and play my... Play my Forgotten Sanctuary. I play Forgotten Sanctuary here, one, because it's the best play, two, because the play that I really like do doing on seven is like going for, uh, Forgotten Sanctuary plus plus Hollow Dogma. It's such a really good play because you get like 10, 8 in wards and they can't be targeted, so they have to be hard interactive, which is insane. Additionally, it gives me the shadows so need necessary to play Ektar, which it did just top deck like, off the Dogma. So I can go ahead and play Ektar next turn. Hey, you're not the you're not the only you're not the only one out here who can go ahead and you know do some potion say oh. I can do I can do it too. Now here my opponent does misplay, I believe. Yeah. The correct play is to actually go ahead and Yeah, the correct play is to actually go ahead and trade in one of the two threes first and then make that evolve. Because then you, you, you guarantee you get both creatures and you only have to make one trade. If he had lost the roll, he would have had to trade in his entire board and that would have been bad. Now this turn, I'm just gonna go ahead and just like slam dunk up for very neutral here. It's not bad at all. I can go ahead and play my. I can go ahead and play another Forgotten Sanctuary. He's out of cards, and I don't think he plays Satan in his mid shadow deck. So this should be fine. But I'm just gonna go ahead and evolve, and make sure, just because like if I, well, there's no particular reason to evolve. It's just like I don't want to take four damage here if he decides to play like a yellow Ektar here. That's all. Yep, like so. <laughs> so he plays the yellow Ektar, and that's fine. Why? Because I still have my evolve point. He has nothing. So he goes and he drops the Ektar. He trades. But look at that. Like, he has no shadows. He has no shadows. He has, like, I have way more cards than him. Granted, two of my cards are Seraph. So those, 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 like, do and don't count. But anyway, here, here I go ahead and play Forgot the Nice Forgotten Sanctuary. I go ahead and then play my Marwin to go ahead and get another another Barong to set up to get a third Barong after that. I heal for one. Yeah, he draws a card too. But that's fine. It doesn't matter because, again, Hex Proof Wards. So good. So, so good. So I go ahead and I evolve my Marwin. You always, you, you generally speaking, you, you generally evolve a Marwin. Just because like the whole can only take a set number of damage thing is actually kind of relevant. And it does, win, it does win a, do a lot of games, uh, especially in the Dragon matchup. So here he makes a trade. I'm not sure why he made the trade. 
Yeah, because he didn't have enough shadows for Death's Breath, unfortunately. I, maybe, maybe he thought it worked differently. I, I don't really know. I don't really care. So at this point, I'm just like, okay, well, as long as I get the Seraphim to play, I'm like, good. Um, but I did kind of like Bonobo this a, quite a bit. So as long as you just trade your 5 2 into a zombie, then play, then play the seal term for a bird. Trade the bird into another zombie. Trade your, uh, trade your, um, trade your Marwin into the last zombie. Play the Seraph, you're good to go. You, I don't think, I'm, I'm like decently sure you cannot die from that spot. But, um, but I, admit, if I end up doing a lot of like Bonobo stuff for no reason. Like, it's one of those, like, it works here because I'm so far ahead, it shouldn't matter whatever happens. But, but it, but it's just, you know, bad for me. You should, you shouldn't do it like this. Because on the off chance that he has like some kind of like bizarre like tech plus like play or whatever he can like make. I, I could end up somehow losing from this spot, and you, you, you just always want to make sure, to like, just just make sure, just make sure you're like making the, the most the most opportune or accurate plays you can make. Here he plays a Demonator, draws some cards. That's fine. Yeah, he would need to have uh, Falcon Grace here, but even if he has Falcon Grace, he still can't answer the fact that I have I have board. He just he doesn't have a he doesn't have Ektar right now, so. So he makes that play and then just concedes because he he knows it's over. He he knows. Alright, on to the next game. We're gonna be versus Runecraft this time. So Runecraft is pretty touch and go, honestly. Uh, I I've won some games, I've lost some games. Generally speaking though, it's a matchup where as long as your opponent doesn't find doesn't find any Satan cards or doesn't explode for that big of a board, and you you find and you find Forgotten Sanctuary early, you should be fine. But but therein lies the rub because like sometimes you can get debated uh, because your your opponent might not always be playing be playing Daria because obviously some people do realize that that Daria that Daria at times can be you know pretty volatile in the in the not good way. So you might be versus Burn, you might be versus, versus like Control Rune, you might be versus like um, Mysteria. Like I've literally faced like three or four, three or four different Rune archetypes while, while playing GP the, uh, this season. It's, it's been wild. All right, so I, I usually like keeping this hand because if he's Burn Rune, I'm good. If he's Daria, I'm good. Uh, I even pick up a Forgotten Sanctuary, which is also good. Now, if he's not Daria, that sucks. But that's fine because you still have two playable cards and the scripture will be useful at some point later down the road, maybe. So here he plays Golem Salt. The Golem Salt doesn't back mean he's Daria or just or just means he's like Control Rune, which is Monka S. But yeah, I do pick up a second copy of scripture, which is like very, very tragic because it's not what I wanted to hit, but it's OK. We'll, we'll work with that. He plays the Insight here. I was hoping he would play the Golem. If he played the Golem, I would just like banish it, but he just like just uh, digs for more cards, which is smart. So this turn, I just go ahead and just uh, just slam dunk Marwin. It's well, I don't want to say it's always a play, but but it's generally speaking a very very good play to make here. Now another play you could have made is you could also go ahead and go for Beast Call Arya into Dogma. That's also a good play because you have a lot of creatures and you don't have the exposure. Uh, you don't have the exposure Marwin just yet. You can go ahead and use your Marwin on your turn six. Now here he plays Kegla on my City of Gold. This is typically speaking a very very good play that, that your opponent can make, uh, just because like as long as you get rid of the as long as you get rid of the city on like, a very like optimal turn. Here you usually get to go. Now, typically for me, I think I think the turn that's like most devastating for them, for them to get rid of it for me is usually like my turn. Is usually going to like my sub mana turn. But here he drops he drops his hand, goes pretty. Well, I don't want to say all in because he he makes he makes a bunch of trades here, which I don't I don't actually agree with this. But yeah, because like he he's kind of like running scared now, and there was like no point in playing up the Ogler if you were gonna make that play. Because now I, I can just do whatever I want here. However, right, so there's actually, there's actually, this part is actually super important. So the play here was always, I mean, always, always, always to have just gone City, uh, Aria, and then you can go ahead and, uh, and then you can go ahead and just dogma the Aria and then, like, evolve, evolve over this guy. That was just always the play. But I decided to get greedy. And like I'm not even sure, I'm not quite sure exactly why I decided to get greedy. I, I just I just decided to get greedy. So what I go ahead and do it instead here is I just go ahead and play out the Forgotten Sanctuary. However, the Forgotten Sanctuary isn't that good here because you're not really killing a big enough unit. You want to be able to you want to be able to, to pre-evolve this and have it at max HP. 
we have at max HP, he can't just like evolve out. He can't just like evolve out into it. He always has he always has to give you a premium unit into it. So here he plays the Conjurical. In the second place, this I know he's gonna go in. Yep, he plays the Dari immediately. Into concentration, so I'm like, okay. He has to evolve the Conjurical, which is very, very sad for him. However, that's fine. So here I'll go ahead and make my play. So I go ahead and play City into Aria. Into Dogma. The Dogma picks me up Thumbus. Um I go ahead and I evolve the Brong, like I said. We'll have to use another Blade Mage he used two earlier, so he will have to use Zealot or have to give me another Evo. That's fine. Now, this is really the kind of game state that I would like prefer to be in because it's like very Monk S. I can still probably I can still get get to play up my uh, get to play up my Seraph in, into his board and not really care. You would have to be able to excel Satan this turn in order to make me like afraid, possibly, or just you know make, make a giant board and then also uh, force me to play them. So that would also work as well. But he doesn't do it. Uh, and that, that is honestly again a misplay. You, you, all, you always need to go in on the turn on the on, the, on your turn seven going into their turn eight versus Seraph. You, you just you just have to do it. it like it, it doesn't matter if it's like some like lackluster stuff, or whatever. You just need to discourage the the, the, the hate player from going for the from going for the Seraph on the off chance that they might that, like die. Now it doesn't does it always work? No, not always. But you can come decently close to, to being able to like succeed with it. So. Well, sometimes. Now here, this part's scary because I only have one activate. I didn't have the second one, and he did, and he did just he did just do Excel Kaitis, and he did if he if he didn't see it, he did actually hit one of the uh, or did he hit it? No, no, he didn't hit it. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, he uh, he he didn't he didn't he didn't uh, he didn't get lucky and hit a banish one. But yeah, so this turn he goes in, but like I said, this is like one turn too late. You should have gone in before. This way, this way, I may, I maybe would have been scared. But I know how many blade bases you use. I know you I know you also use an E sword. So I don't have to care. Now I do get lucky and pick up the Marwin, but I did have more draws to do it. As you see here, I can go ahead and play more AI. Go ahead and play Marwin there. Go ahead and blow up a creature. Then I go ahead and heal for three. Go back up to 19. Or sorry, go back to the full actually, because I played Marwin. Go back up to the full, and then just kill him. Yep, and Bob's your uncle, cool. You take another one. So right now I'm like 3-0 or 2-0 in actual in terms of actual play games. But that's good. Because you know, right now we only need to win like one more and then you know, hey, we 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 uh we in it, we in the money. We, we have to be in the you know finals again for like the umpteenth uh, for like the I don't know, I think like tenth time I think. I don't, I don't know. I don't actually remember. So I I literally do not keep track of GPs. Alright, so this time we're reverse the sword. So versus sword, it's really scary. Same, same reason why versus rune is also kind of scary because you don't know which one is going to be now many times I've, I've been I've been pretty blessed and many times it will always just be uh it will always just be Spartacus sword because pe because people really like trying to you know trying to, trying to go for that win but um but it, that doesn't always happen and playing versus Sparta playing versus Spartacus sword is like always like kind of weird. Alright, so I keep the Arya because if he's a if he's a if he's a board based version of sort, Arya will be great. Arya into Brong, that's so great. But if he's a creature but sorry, but if he's like a spell based version of a version of sword, that like, you know, tries to like draw tries to like, you know, draw his entire deck or whatever, it will still be good just because I can I can try to force him to not draw his entire deck. So here he plays F Mara on two. So I can play this, I'm like, oh well he's either neutrals now or he is in fact Spartacus. Either works fine for me. I don't really mind that much. So I just go ahead and invocate my city here. I could have played scripture. Um, I choose not to though, like I said, because the get, getting out city is more important. When we play some entrance teachings, that's when I know for sure. Yep, he's in. He is in fact one hundred and fifty thousand percent Spartacus. And that's good because we know that we know that now. We can go ahead and like you know work with it, right? So I just go ahead and play the ritual here. Now you could have held the ritual, in, um, but it's, it's like good. To, it's good to play it here because you get maximum value out of it. You. will uh, that being said, though, you'll want to actually hold your scriptures for, for killing Ding Dongs if he doesn't if he doesn't evolve them, because it, it it does matter. So I go ahead and I play my Arya here. Mind you, this is possibly draw last unless I choose. Yeah, okay. 
yeah, no, I, I just go ahead and choose to go ahead and just dodge with this. I'm like, hey, no, we, we gotta go in. We, we gotta, we, we gotta go for the win right now. So I go ahead and I evolve the Brit to start going face. So generally speaking, versus the versus this deck, you have to make these kind of plays because he, he cannot he cannot be allowed to just like free ball and just like draw his deck or whatever. Not when not when you can play real creatures and just kill them, right? So I go ahead and I, I just you know start making the plays. He gets a necklace there. However, he chooses to toss away with an altered fate. This surprised me. I, I, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't I didn't understand why he did that. But I guess he just like didn't have creatures in hand, which was certainly possible. But yeah, so Mad Lance Centaur triggers twice, doesn't actually kill my guy. I'm then allowed to just play out the Forgotten Sanctuary, go ahead and get a Barong. I go ahead and evolve face. But now I have a 6-4 and a 5-4. And I know I know his deck struggles dealing with these creatures because of, because of one of the creatures that would be able to deal with it. He played it out on three earlier, so I'm pretty sure he doesn't have an answer to this. Yeah, so he just like plays Spartacus here. I'm like, yo, are you kidding me? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Why would you do that? Um, yeah, because there's a decent amount of birds in this deck. So if I hit a bird, if this creature somehow lives, like you know, a lot of ways for him to die right now. So I didn't really like that he did this. It, like he was just, like very, very disrespectful with that. I, I felt like, um, and, and I do pick up Beast Ball here, but I need to find uh, I need to find Dogma. If I find Dogma, I'm good to go. I don't find the Dogma yet. That's fine. But I can just go. I can just go ahead and go face play the Beast Call. Uh, I get to blow up a Ward next turn. I don't think his deck's playing any Wards. It does, it, it, yeah. So he's dead unless he makes a Ward or unless he blows this up. It's so hard for him to blow it up. And even if he blows up, he has to kill it too. Like, so he has to kill, he has to kill both the bird and the tiger, and I, I don't think he can do all three of those things at the same time. So, yeah, so he, so he just like starts drawing his deck or whatever, but like he doesn't have enough alter fates in the in the in, the, in his hand, and his deck, his hand size isn't big enough to, to try to go for the win here. So I do actually um, get another chance to draw for lethal. I do in fact pick up the healing prayer, so yeah, that is in fact lethal, and yeah, so cool. So with this, we're, you know, we're able to like, go ahead and, and, and qualify for finals. But of course, at this point, I'm like, hey, you know, like we only, only had to play like three games. Like this game was probably, was probably the most stressful. So after this, you know, the, like the last game should be easy peasy. And it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. Like you just gotta, you know, pat yourself on the back, you know, once you've like qualified. But go, go, but go ahead, you know, still remember that. Oh, we, we go, we go from the dubs right now. You know, we going for the, we going for those uh, five O's. You know, the rings. So I go ahead and I'm actually versus Haven this time. So Haven is, tr is a tricky, tricky matchup because you literally don't know which type of Haven is going to be. Like Haven is like probably the it's probably the most versatile of of the three. Well, the most seemingly versatile of of, of the meta decks in uh, in Unlimited right now, just because they have like all of their wing cons are all so they all require you to play vastly differently. Like well. But, but generally, the the, uh, the general thing you should be going for is that you should be going for pressure. But yeah, like, so they have, like, Heladin, which is, like, basically, like, you know, Tanker Shrine or whatever, that, like, tries to decay you. They have, uh, they have Seraph, same thing, tries to decay you, but Seraph's a little bit slower. They have City of Gold Stormhaven, which is very, very fast, and you you have to, like, both defend and attack at the same time. But yeah, there's a lot of questions that it asks you. So, alright, so I'm going second. If you, as you may have noticed or whatever, I did actually, I did actually keep the Seraph in my hand. You might be wondering, but Nandra, why? Well, it's because I'm really, really good at playing mirrors. Only, well, playing mirrors like this, where, 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 like, it's just like, where like, you're required to have a very specific card in your hand uh, and, and play it on a certain turn. Why? Because I understand how to pressure people. Like, I understand, you know, the, the, the basics of, of like sandwiching and whatnot. It's, you know, applying the pressure at, at necessary points in time in order to go ahead and like beat them. Because if you can't play the card that, that you need to play on, on curve while going first, but I can, then it's like the same. Then it's like I went first the entire time. Haha. -ha. <laughs> All like according to K Kaku. But here he actually seraphic blades my guy, uh, my city. I'm like, damn, that's actually really bad for me, because obviously I do. Because obviously that will mean that I will actually need to hold. That I will actually need to have all three activators in hand when I play a seraph, which could get dicey. Because most times, I, like as you've seen from the other games, ever I usually like to like toss my activators away pretty, pretty aggressively. So here I go ahead and play Morii. I pick up Marwin. Uh, the Marwin pickup is good, but it's also bad. I don't think I'll be playing the Marwin because he went first. If he didn't go first, I would probably play the Marwin, unless unless he did something like this, which in which which you know he played the Arya. Now it's okay for me to play Marwin because now I'll go ahead and play the Marwin and kill his birds before his birds can actually do anything. Unfortunately for me, the Moria won't trigger the way the way I want it to because uh, 
I popped it on my turn as opposed to as oh, sorry, I popped it on my turn before he had creatures. If he had creatures first, the creature would always blow up first, but that did, that's not how it works because of order of operation. Because I played the card first, that's just, it's not gonna work. So I go ahead and make the trade, I go ahead and evolve trade. Um honestly speaking though, you could go ahead and you can like evolve the tiger and leave the Marwin uh, and leave the Marwin uh, unevolved. It's actually healthier for the Marwin to do it that way because it can't it can't be scriptured. But I, I figured he was just going to play Themis, and that's fine. Why is that fine? Because that was a turn of no development for him. That's so important. Why? Because now I have I have the opportunity to try to make him choke. Now, if you're a smart player and you actually know your damage calculations or whatever, you should know that there's no way, no fucking way, can I kill you from 20 as Haven. Like, uh, like and, and definitely not before 10 mana. But sometimes people choke. Sometimes people choke and do some silly stuff. So I go ahead and I just like play out the Barong. I go ahead and I evolve the Barong. Why? Because this is the last turn before the end of the game. If he plays Seraphir, I lose. If, however, he does not play Seraph for some ungodly reason, then I have a chance to win by playing my own Seraph. Because I know he's not playing Fall from Grace most likely, and that's okay. So he plays Moria here. The second plays Moria, I'm like, yay, I gotcha, bitch. Gotcha. So I lose my Barong, but I, I have the chance to now win the game. Because he plays out a Forgotten Sanctuary of his own, but I'm like, okay, sure, that's fine. You still have to have the Fall from Grace, but you're not actually drawing cards, and that's an issue for you. So I go ahead and just drop my Seraph. Just drop it like it's hot. Now, one slight issue, though, is I do actually need to draw a third Activator, because I, I played the Marwyn. Um, but this should be fine. Because I'm, draw I'm drawing two cards uh, next, and I have, I have the ability to possibly draw another card. Now he plays his, uh, his Seraph here. He then evolves the wrong space. So as I get my draw one for the turn, I, get, I draw another card off of the uh, off of the globe, and I pick up the third act race. So I'm like, hey, we got him, boys. We got him. Made the place to win. Oof. Got the skills to pay the bills. Oh, let's go. So I go ahead and I just um, drop all the activations to get one because uh, I, I I deserve that win. I actually deserve that win because he, he just threw it away. I, I don't I don't know what to say, but people are bad sometimes. People are actually just bad. Yeah. So we get the win. We go 5-0, and it's like a a do the ninja dance, do the ninja dance, a. But this, uh, but this is just you know, a slight example of like something you could play if you wanted to be, go ahead and, and be successful in GP if you have not already qualified for finals. Um, like I said, there were like, there were plenty of other things that, for you to play. It, all all that required is just for like new, to, uh, just like for you to like do your homework or whatever. Know what you need to play against and just know how to play your deck. That's it. Like I, I've seen people like qualify on, on like uh, on, like Pachinko Dragon. I've seen people like qualify on uh, qualify qualify on decks that are literally just like you know decks from rotation with no changes to front limited. Like and that's insane. Like if they can do it on that, you can do it on what you can do it on whatever you want to do too. Now, mind you, there are of course you have certain limitations. Like for example, like you can't be out here just you know like playing like a well destiny deck or whatever, just like making it, um, unless you're just like that godly of a player. But uh, I, I I I don't think that there exists a, a player with that much finesse in this game. I don't know. That's just me. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Let me know what, what you thought of Seraph, and I'll let me do down in the comments below. Were you impressed? Were you not impressed? You know, uh, I would definitely love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys for watching, and I will.